JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 9th. I am Harala Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian morning Thursday. It lost the most ground against NOC, SEC, the Euro, the Canadian dollar and the Aussie in that order while it underperformed the least versus the yen. Now the tumble in the dollar, the relative weakness in the yen and the fact that the Aussie and the Looney were among the main gainers suggest uh, that uh, risk appetite uh, rebounded uh, again at some point yesterday. Indeed, although major EU indices continued sliding, things changed during the US session with all three of Wall Street main, main indices uh, trading in the green, gaining on average around 1%. The, it, it is worth mentioning that uh, Nasdaq was up 1.44% uh, hitting a new all-time high. The positive investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today with Japan's Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composite rising 0.52 and 1.01 percent respectively. Although infected cases uh, from the coronavirus continued to accelerate yesterday, getting closer to their uh, daily record, investors decided, to, the investors decided to retake risk, pushing equities up and safe havens down. With no clear catalyst behind the rebound, yesterday's market action confirms our view that Tuesday's slide was just an opportunity for some investors to lock profits after a decent uh, winning streak. Lately, we've been uh, repeatedly highlighting the battle between those who believe that the global economy will recover, will recover faster than previously anticipated and those who are afraid of a second wave of coronavirus infections worldwide. Although there are evidence supporting um, both views, the first group appears to have the upper uh, hand. Therefore, we will hold the view that as long as uh, most economies around the world continue to ease their lockdown measures, the recovery is likely to continue, which means more gains for equities and risk-linked assets. We repeat that in order to change our view, we would like to see more lockdown measures being reintroduced around the world, something that may result in a second hit to the global economy. However, we see the chances of that happening as very low and the reason is uh, because following the damages from the first round of the restrictions, the global economy may not be able to weather another couple of months of freezing activity. Thus, governments may not be willing to take uh, the risk. Another interesting development uh, is that gold surpassed uh, the 1,800 mark uh, yesterday for the first time since November 2011 and continued to trade north. In our view, the current trading pattern in the financial world is a win-win situation for the precious metal. During periods of market optimism, it gains due to the broader weakness in the dollar, while uh, when investors are nervous and afraid, it still gets uh, benefit uh, as it acts as a safe haven itself. Now, as for uh, today's events, the only items on the agenda worth mentioning are Canada's housing starts and building permits for June and May respectively, as well as the US initial jobless claims for last week. Canada's housing starts are expected to have increased to 198,000 uh, from 193.5 thousand, while uh, no forecast is available for building permits. The US initial jobless claims are forecast to have slowed again to 1.3 uh, 375 uh, million from 1.727 million. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. 
So goodbye, have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.